Hello and welcome to Off My Shelves and this is the long-awaited part two of my read-through of 30 Image Comic titles to celebrate Image Comics 30th anniversary and 30th birthday. And so, yeah, let's get underway. And so we'll start with Scotty Young's I Hate Fairyland. Now I got the deluxe editions of these, book one and book two, and this collects everything that's published of the series thus far, really. And yeah, these are amazing, oversized deluxe editions hardbacks really well made no dust jackets but really really nicely made hardbacks to be fair and so if you've never read I Hate Fairyland or never heard of I Hate Fairyland it is written and drawn by Scotty Young and first and foremost the art is spectacular Scotty Young is one of the premier artists for you know cover work and content and he, he is so well entrenched now in the modern comic book community that I think everyone for the most part should know his name or will have heard his name but either way this is his creator own comic published by Image and he created the character Gertrude and Gertrude basically gets pulled in as a young child into fairyland and she is given a quest a quest to find a key and that key will unlock the door going back home but 27 years later she's still trying to find the key and she turned into a bitter bitter human being even though she hasn't physically aged on the outside she has aged on the inside and so she's well into her 30s by the time we catch up with her for the bulk of the story and yeah she is certainly one of the most embittered human beings you will ever come across she wants to grow up she wants to get out of fairyland but she just can't do it because sadly she seems to be one of the stupidest characters in comic book history unfortunately for her and so i hate fairyland is really catching up with gertrude after she's been there 27 years and following her antics her trying her best to find the key to get out of fairyland but then just being a ruthless murderer because she's so sick and tired of fairyland that she's just turned into a maniacal highly highly skilled killer and she just murders and destroys everything in her path really nothing is sacred in fairyland to gertrude nothing at all and so each book collects 10 issues of I Hate Fairyland. And again, for the most part, the first volume is her trying to achieve her main goal of getting out of Fairyland. But then loads of things transpire to make it very difficult for her to get out. So she ends up basically staying for even longer than she perhaps could have because she's too stupid to take the opportunities that are in front of her, unfortunately. And then the second volume kind of shoots off in different directions and a reoccurring character comes back and really plays havoc with Gertrude and Fairyland. But either way, the main part of this story is really seeing this Fairyland and seeing a person who doesn't want to be part of this colourful, wonderful land and just being ruthless and killing and destroying this very, you know, fluffy and magical land for the most part it is a humor comic if you want to put it like that it is very much aimed to make you laugh to entertain you it's not an in-depth deep comic and that is kind of one of its issues i think even though on the first read and i read most of this first volume previous to getting the hardbacks but then i reread it and then read the second one and the rest of the first one together but the problem is, is there's not really much incentive to read it again because it is very superficial and one dimensional in many ways. Because once you've seen the art, once you've heard the jokes, once you get the gist of the storyline, there's not many layers to the story at all. And so revisiting this comic is not something that I probably will do or that... It, it doesn't really encourage you to revisit it, I don't think, because it is quite on the nose with the humour. There's not much subtext going on. There's not much kind of, you know, subplots or sub-characters. There are other characters coming in, don't get me wrong, and some really good ones, but ultimately it does follow Gertrude. It follows her trials and tribulations. And, yeah, for me, the art was the standout. The story was a little bit one-dimensional i suppose is the best way i can put it because again it didn't really bring me in to want to reread it and reread it and reread it again i felt when i finished it that i had had it that i didn't need to come back to it at all really 
but who knows i may well be wrong i may well revisit it in a few years time and find hidden depths where that i didn't realize on the first read through now for volume two of extremity now if you didn't see the first part of this series or look in a 30 image comic books i would look at part one because we looked at extremity and that video will definitely outline the storyline and the premise of the world that daniel warren johnson is creating here now these come out in two trade paperbacks and the world they build is just phenomenal i think as the opening bookend pages say, the rising plains, earth has been abandoned and sections of the earth have risen into the sky and different tribes have founded their communities on these rising plains. And in the end of the first one, we left our characters in a precarious situation where brother and sister and father of one tribe were trying to... They were trying to really kind of find themselves and not be defined by the revenge story that dominated the first half because their father is very much damaged by trying to achieve revenge no matter what the cost. But the son and daughter, even though they've grown up in this environment, they genuinely want to kind of move along and shift their lives in a more positive direction. It is a fabulous world that daniel warren johnson creates a wonderful mix of fantasy and sci-fi and volume two like volume one creates this wonderful story full of a just an amazing world and just amazing world building and just amazing characters and the artwork obviously as you might expect from daniel warren johnson is spectacular and so yeah i can't really say anything negative about this at all i thoroughly enjoyed volume one and i thoroughly enjoyed volume two and it does leave it open for daniel to come back and revisit the world if he wishes but ultimately it's quite a nice conclusion as well then to the fade out the deluxe edition by ed brubaker and sean phillips this is obviously if it's done by ed brubaker and sean phillips there is going to be some high quality comics going on but i should say that when i originally kind of read this story it was in single issue form and it was one of the most torturous experiences of my entire reading career if you want to put it like that because when issue one came out it came out and then it was a delay for issue two a delay for issue three a delay for issue four and so the it was a very much segmented storyline that took forever to complete and so by the time i was getting to issue 12 and the end of the fade out i was kind of just absolutely lost and so i had to revisit it many times over and so i reread it all when it was finally out digitally and enjoyed it thoroughly and it was one of these key comic books i think that don't really work as a comic book it should have always come out in one big graphic novel format i think and when i read it in this format it really does work perfectly in a full collected edition collecting 1 to 12 it works expertly i think definitely and it starts out with a bit of a, a a hook that doesn't really tell the full story of the book coming because it starts out with the murder of an actress and charlie our main character a writer in the studio system in the 1950s hollywood studio system he basically discovers the body and then it's almost well at least actually at the end of the first issue you think it's going to be a whodunit but it's not necessarily a whodunit the whodunit part of this storyline could be condensed into you know a handful of issues maybe even three or four issues the vast majority of the issues look into charlie look into his friend look into all the wider cast of people involved in the film industry in what's considered hollywood's golden age and it's looking into the debauchery the criminality the just the ins and outs of the horrible world that the 1950s golden era cinema was based in really so i would say that if you like criminal um, stories and crime fiction this may not be the type of book for you because even though it's got that in it it's got that whodunit and that murder mystery in it and loads of other crimes for that matter it's not necessarily a crime drama a crime thriller it's more a look of the world of the 1950s cinema in america and for me i love that era and i love looking back and discovering more and more information and more about that world 
And because Ed Brubaker's relative, I believe, was heavily involved in that world and that cinema system, a lot of his own personal knowledge and personal memories in his family have kind of found their way into this story arc. And yeah, and it's a, it's, it's a fabulous book. It certainly looks more into the cinematic world, into the actors, into the writers, into the people who were blacklisted during the McCarthy era, than it does into the who done it. That almost is just a springboard into the wider problems that are with the studio system. The colouring by Elizabeth Bradweiser is lush as well, and the art by Sean Phillips is stunning. Yeah, it's a great story, but it certainly benefits i think from being in collected edition then onto the three volumes of paper girls by brian k vaughan and cliff chang these again are the deluxe editions of paper girls collecting the entire series basically issues 1 to 30 i think more or less 10 issues a piece and absolutely gorgeous books the production quality in these books is so high i mean they are just stunning books on every level but the story inside is equally as stunning i think because cliff chang's artwork is just absolutely gorgeous on every level brian k vaughan is obviously a genius storyteller why the last man ex machina saga all of these books are under brian k vaughan's belt so he knows what he's doing but as i've said in previous episodes and previous things that i put out on this channel he does struggle ending things, I think. Like, there's a lot of controversy over the ending of Why the Last Man. There's a lot of controversy over endings of any Brian K. Vaughan books, I think. And this is one of those ones that I fear may fall into that category as well. It starts off following a group of paper girls in the 1980s, literally on Halloween in the 1980s, and they get pulled into this massively in-depth, detailed science fiction drama so what happens is they discover that the town is being invaded by two warring parties are they alien are they human the book kind of outlines two options and two possibilities for both really but either way there is this crazy interdimensional science fiction battle going on that the girls are drawn into and then they stumble upon a time machine which they jump into and then they start dotting around throughout history and it, even though it sounds ridiculous in, in its premise, it is so well done and so engrossing. It is just a wonderful sci-fi drama that's got such a lot of 80s nostalgia in it and such a lot of friendship building between the main cast of four girls. It's just a wonderful book, really, I think, because it really does take you on a, just a magical journey through time, through different dimensions, friendships being built, friendships being lost people finding out and discovering about themselves. It's, it's an amazing book, it's an amazing story. But volume three is at the point where obviously that story starts to wrap up and starts to bring itself to an end. And that is where I think that this book will have the most controversy around it because the ending is one of those endings that in general, Tonally is different from the rest of the book in a, in, a, in, a, in a similar way to why the last man is when you get to the end of why the last man the end it kind of tonally is a little different from the journey and it's the same for this the journey is so fast paced and so ridiculous and spanning so many different dimensions and time scales and different characters and different animals and different creatures that it's just ridiculous and then when the ending comes it's all about that emotional impact on our four main characters. So tonally it shifts massively and it can be a little jarring, I think. But for me, I enjoyed it massively. The ending certainly wasn't as interesting and wasn't as engaging and wonderful for me as the journey. But that didn't really spoil the book for me at all. It was still a good ending, still a good story, still a solid book. But the journey was certainly where it was at for me. Now the next book is the hardback version of Black Magic by Greg Rucker and Nicholas Scott. This collects issues 1 to 11 of the Image comic series. I don't know why I said Image comic series, that's pretty obvious. This book starts off with a bit of witchcraft. You're following the character of Rowan Black and she is a detective in this Portsmouth area of America and she is not only a detective but she is also a witch. 
part of a cult, part of a movement in this area. And she inherits certain powers and gets certain abilities that she's not necessarily happy with. But either way, this book has got lots and lots of mysteries, lots and lots of character development. The main female lead is astounding. Rowan Black is a really strong female lead, which is no surprise because Greg Rucker does amazing when he focuses on female leads for some reason he writes astoundingly good female leads but either way this book is phenomenal if you like witchcraft stories if you like police detective stories and action stories this has got it all mixed in and yeah it is a phenomenal read the artwork i should say in general is without doubt some of the best artwork going and i have no idea how nicola scott is not more well known because this kind of black and white or brownie sepia style that she's got going on and just the pencil work in general and inking work in general is just astounding but then when you layer in these kind of splashes of color when they come in it's just phenomenal it's a really well crafted book expertly written and the characters well thought out and it's only just starting issues 1 to 11 now I think they're up to about issue 16 or 17 now but it, it, it is taking a while for them to come out with them but in general it is well worth your time if you pick this up I don't think you'll be disappointed at all really Next, Little Bird by Darcy Van Polgeist, or Geist, I always say that, Ian Bertram, and Colours by Matt Hollingsworth. Now, this book is one of my favourites, to be fair. It is really a standout for me because the artwork of Ian Bertram is very strange and weird and wonderful and i really like it i think it's so different that it's always going to be quite polarizing for people i think some people are either going to really like it or some people are going to really hate it it's got hints of kind of morbius of it but not quite it's got few differences coming in with how he shapes people and humans and how he portrays their faces it's even got a feel of frank quietly about it to be fair as well but either way the artwork is phenomenal in this book and inventive and creative and the book itself follows little bird who is on the cover and little bird is a member of a tribe that's up in canada and this tribe essentially has been abused over decades by the central powers running the americas these days the new vatican the new vatican is the place to be in the united nations of america and that is where all the wealth all the money is but as you might imagine all of that is concentrated on the church and the church building itself just outside there's mass poverty and disease and so all of this has pushed the new vatican to experiment over the years with different sciences and trying to mash together religion and science to achieve the ultimate goal of you know getting higher powers or having cures for certain ailments and certain diseases but either way they experimented on certain people in these tribal areas and they acquired special abilities like regenerative powers or invincibility to a certain degree and little bird has some of those traits now little bird's mother goes missing early on and when she goes missing early on in her battle with the new vatican you realize what this world is this world is a world that's absolutely destroyed by religious extremism the new vatican is obsessed with spreading their religion and having everything in their exact way but they've gone so far from you know christianity that they're in just this amazingly deep and dark place where they'll do whatever they need to do to achieve their ends and so this book as you can see is absolutely brutal because little bird and her companions don't pull any punches the new vatican don't pull any punches and essentially it's just an all-out bloodbath in places and the violence and the battles are insane as you can see <laughs> but essentially the world building in this book is phenomenal and the character development is phenomenal essentially this first book is really an origin story for little bird and so you get her introduction her losing her mother who then going to find friends to help her try and find her mother and then getting pulled into all manner of different dramas and events and activities and eventually then getting pulled into the resistance that exists in elders hope because i should have said yeah the sub title of this book is actually the fight for elders hope and that's the last free community 
And so Little Bird grows from not just fighting for her mother and trying to find her mother. She grows to try and fight for the freedom of the people of Elder's Hope and tries to define herself as part of this resistance movement. And you really get invested in this world. And every time you turn a page and you get introduced to a new bit of technology or a new part of the world or a new character, it's always intriguing and engaging and never really boring or out of place. And yeah, a really great read in general. And finally, Pulp by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Now, this is a standard size hardcover and it collects Pulp, which is just a standalone graphic novel by the pay. And Pulp in general is my second favorite Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips story. The first being Kill or Be Killed. This story follows our main character here, Max, and Max writes cowboy stories for a local pulp magazine in New York City in 1939. And he is struggling. He's struggling to be relevant. He's struggling to be taken seriously. He's struggling to develop his stories any further. And as you go through the book, you realize more and more that he's not writing made up stories. He's writing stories that he has actually experienced. He is an old outlaw from the wild west so he's a reformed outlaw from the wild west and he's charting his stories in a local pulp magazine but also he looks around the world and he sees people being abused people being mugged and he wants to do something about it and no one else is doing anything about it so he tries to but the world is just kind of treating him badly and so he has a heart attack he ends up in hospital and he really questions everything about his life and then slowly but surely tries to maybe get back into crime and get back into the criminality that he experienced as a younger man and so the first part of the book are really charting max's kind of downfall and his path to going back to criminality but then it's nowhere near as straightforward and as simple as that because where this book goes and the character development of max in general you never quite see coming and you never see the twists and the turns and the character development it's such a short read as well but it's absolutely crammed with everything you would want from a book it's got an intriguing story it's got fantastic character development it's got great twists and turns it's got everything going for it and do yourself a favor if you don't read any of the image comic books that i have put forward read this one because it's quick and easy and it will fully satisfy anyone i'm sure of it but that is it for this episode part three will be along as soon as i can get around to reading them and sorting them out in video form but thank you very much for watching and i will catch you on the next one